Hey, Dr. Pine, um, can you introduce yourself for us? Sure, my name is Raj Pine. I'm an interventional radiologist. Um, I uh, live and work in upstate New York uh, in Rochester. Um, and uh, I am also the program director for the IR residencies at our program called Rochester General Hospital. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so can you tell me about uh, your personal journey or how you got into IR? Sure, um, I got into IR um, through diagnostic radiology. So I tell people I was very lucky. Um, I unfortunately, like many other people did not discover radiology early enough. Um, I didn't know much about it. It wasn't a core um, science or, or elective, I guess, to uh, in medical school. And I, I, I've heard that over the years is from so many applicants and so many of the people in radiology. It's, it's uh, I always describe it as you know, you consider the more noble or, or natural pathway to go towards medicine or surgery or surgical subspecialty. And so a lot of people don't really, you know, consider radiology the, the, the right way to go. Um, and I think it's very interesting because for most people, it would make more sense to teach anatomy via um, radiology, because that's how most people interact with the body except for surgeons. So I always think it's interesting. I'm, I'm hearing more and more that some medical schools are starting to incorporate radiology with the, uh, you know, uh, preclinical anatomy labs, which I think is great. Um, but, uh, you know, for me going forward, I went through, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I originally wanted to go into cardiothoracic surgery. My uh, father had a, a triple bypass when I was very young. And um, I always thought, you know, for me in my head as a young child, I thought I want to grow up to be a cardiothoracic surgeon and, and try to help somebody else's father uh, or, or mother or, or family member. And unfortunately, by the time I got to surgery, um, I spent all my time and all my effort getting to that first and second year when I started shadowing. And, you know, it, it culminated in the fact that I was in a, the first, you know, six, seven hour cardiothoracic surgery. And uh, lo and behold, I, I didn't like it. I thought it was boring and it was long and it was um, tenuous. And, you know, it's very funny when you have this cognitive dissonance in your head of this really, you know, sort of pathway that you should be on and the fact that you actually didn't like it that much. I didn't like the OR um, culture or the hierarchy or, you know, just the, the, the nuance of a, such a long surgery. And so I didn't really know what I wanted to do for third and fourth year. I think uh, some people know exactly what they want to do from day one. And others like me get a little lost. And I, uh, I was on my medical rotation. I still remember this at a small hospital called Cooperstown, where the, which is where the baseball hall of fame is. And an old medical doctor and I, I was, I was on service with him and we went down to radiology and he asked me to get some films and I said, okay, should I grab the radiologist too? And I remember he looked at me and he said, well, radiologists aren't real uh, doctors. They're just, they drink their coffee and, you know, they, they do their thing, but, you know, I, I don't believe in them as real doctors. And as a naive medical student, I, you know, didn't know what else to say. So I almost, you know, I, I believed it and I parroted it, unfortunately. So I never considered radiology a good field. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I sort of liked everything, but didn't love anything. And I remember right before, maybe a few months before match, I had a friend who was two years ahead of me. Uh, he came back to do radiology. And he just saw me some one day sitting there and he said, you know, you should come down and, and uh, shadow in radiology. And I, I, th I thought, you know, I don't know if I'm going to like it. I remember what this, this medical doctor said to me. And I, and I went down there. Luckily, I got a rotation. I went down there and I absolutely loved it. I, I still remember, you know, it's the first time that all my friends were like, wow, you look like you really enjoy going to the hospital. I, I loved it. Every day you walk in, it was just amazing, you know, to be able to be able to help so many people and you know, find it so interesting and in between talk to people. And, you know, it, I always thought it was going to be much more dark and dreary. And, you know, this, it was so interactive being in the ED and being in the reading room. So um, that was my exposure, unfortunately, very late. I think a lot of people find it late. Um, I'm hoping for a lot of medical students, they find it earlier and earlier. So I went into radiology for radiology. Um, and then the, the really great part is um, once I got into radiology and I started really exploring and I, I applied, I happened one day to walk into the IR suite and I had no idea what IR was. And I was blown away. I mean, absolutely just, it looked like the future of medicine and I couldn't believe what they were doing. Um, and, you know, the funny part is, you know, 20 some years later, I still believe the same thing and it's fantastic. And I still share the same enthusiasm, which is what I hope any, anybody else going to medicine, you know, can feel the same way about their job. And I, I absolutely love what I do. So that was a very long winded answer, but that is my, you know, sort of pathway into radiology. I went to radiology for diagnostic and I found IR through there. Awesome. No, that was a great explanation. I think a lot of medical students can relate to that later exposure, definitely. Can you tell me about the different training pathways uh, to get into IR? Sure. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give a little brief historical context. So the way I did it was, again, uh, 
you know, I did radiology and those four years of radiology every year I did a rotation at IR. And as much as I love radiology and, you know, as much as I, you know, found it fascinating and love the, the intellectual challenge, um, I, I was so gravitated, you know, gravitated back towards the IR months where, you know, you use the diagnostic imaging and all the skills you have, but then of course it was like surgery. It was, you know, you, you were fixing people and helping people and interacting with people. And, you know, you came in to, you know, stop a bleed or we did a lot of PAD when I was a resident. So, um, you know, IR is literally, you know, the marriage of a surgical, you know, subspecialty and radiology. And for those people who are inclined towards procedures or surgery or, you know, really, you know, a lot of patient interaction and wanting to help people with, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, just interventions, I, I think IR is, is where people fall into. So um, I fell into that way, you know, by the time I was a second or third year, there's no question I was going to IR. But, you know, if you think about it, doing four years of diagnostic radiology and then a year of IR at a different institution, is really challenging. It's, it's not a great training pathway. And what I mean by that is I learned, you know, radiology and, and IR the way I did at my institution. And then I applied to a different program. I went to uh, Boston. And when I trained there at uh, Brigham and Women's for a year, it was a new system. It was a new, that was early, very early on in the EMR system. It was a new, um, you know, attendings group. It was a new, you know, OR, ICU. I knew nothing about anything. So I spent the first, you know, couple of months getting used to a system. The new attendings were, you know, getting used to me. I was getting used to the program, how everything worked, how call worked. And so it was really challenging. So you spend all these time doing that while you're literally trying to learn all these techniques. And everybody, you know, obsesses on catheters and wires and needles and, and you know, all this, you know, really what, what are the technical skills of IR. But what happens is in that one year, in that new year, it's really hard to learn all the other nuances. Um, you know, how do you take care of a patient who's in pain? How do you deal with interprocedural hypertension? How do you, you know, if you see a patient in clinic, what are the questions you ask? So these, these are things that are really, really challenging. And, and that is what the whole periprocedural aspect of IR is. So the training pathway, you know, changed really in 2012, where IR went from a subspecialty of diagnostic radiology to its own um, primary specialty. And at that point, I really think is where, you know, the, the you know, the the decision was if you're going to have a new specialty, obviously in, in its own form, it has to have its own training pathway. And so the thought was, you know, do you switch it to its own complete just IR training or, you know, do you incorporate some DR in there? And I think the right choice is made by, you know, uh, people who are, you know, much wiser than myself who said, you know, what makes an IR is the ability to combine and have this expertise in diagnostic imaging, be able to look at any set of imaging, interpret it and use it, plus the combination of minimally invasive procedures procedural skill. So if you have that combination, you know, you need to have that background of, of diagnostic radiology. So, so the, pro, the, the point was to make an integrated IR pathway. And they're you know, intimately associated and married, I guess, to the DR program. So for the integrated IR pathway, which is the most classic pathway, I guess you would say, people apply to medical school, they go to internship. And then once they match this program, they'll do three years of diagnostic radiology in their program. And then the last two years of IR. And although the whole year, you know, the whole time thing sounds very similar to what I did in the four plus one program, the three plus two is very different because, you know, for example, in my program, you're spending three years, you're on diagnostic, but you do, you know, one month, the first year, two months, the second year, two months, the third year. So you've already done almost half a year of IR by the time you get there, you know, the attendings, you know, the hospital, you know, the system, you've been in rounds, you know, how everything works. Um, at that point, you've already done quite a few procedures. So by the time you're starting your fourth year, which is then your IR, you know, year, you're ready to go. And so they start, they're already doing procedures. They're already, you know, really in the, in the thick of it. They're, they're already called my IR seniors. Then they have two years of that, really two years to hone their skill. And that doesn't mean just procedures, but it means going to clinic. It means going, you know, taking call. It means, you know, um, you know, doing a consult service, learning how clinical medicine works. And that's really key and not, not learning from one, but, you know, you know, for, for us, seven different IR attendings. And for most programs, you know, you get really good experience of doing all that with multiple people. And over time, you know, we, you get didactic lectures for two years, uh, you know, especially at the end of the two years, which are different than the diagnostic. So that's the, you know, what, I, you know, a lot of people consider sort of the main pathway for medical school. That being said, there's two, you know, other really ways to go. And, and the two other things that I tell people are, there's a lot of people who decide I might not want to do IR right away. I'm not, I'm not sure. It's not something I want to commit to. Um, so they might decide uh, you know, to do IR in the middle of diagnostic radiology residency. And the other uh, choice is that you know, people might say, 
there's very few, at least for now, very few IR integrated residency slots. So how else can I get in? So the two ways I tell people are to, uh, you know, apply, you know, sort of the, in the sort of more traditional way, which means you do diagnostic radiology residency first, and then you apply to the independent program. So typically if you do just four years of residency, um, a diagnostic, you decide, I want to do interventional radiology. I want to commit myself to that. Um, you'll apply and go into a two-year independent IR residency. That means you're going to go somewhere else or same spot, train for two years, and that's really sort of a, a lengthy uh, or, or a longer residency. And what it's going to do is it's going to provide you the time to learn, also the, learn the procedures, but also learn the um, periprocedural care, which is fantastic, the clinical skills. If for a lot of people that are actually interested in the program has ESIR, that's essentially like a mini fellowship of your fourth year. And what that does is if you get enough um, uh, cases and you know, enough you know, experience, then what you'll do is you'll go into a one-year independent IR residency. And that just shortens your pathway a little bit. Um, it's dependent on your, your diagnostic program, having an ESIR program, and you getting enough cases and, and getting the uh, accreditation to go into a one-year program. The best way to think about the independent IR residency, again, is very similar to what the old fellowship was like just a little bit more uh, clinically oriented is the best way to describe it. So those are the really the sort of the three pathways for an IO resident. Gotcha. Thank you for that explanation. What advice do you have for any medical students uh, who are interested in pursuing IR? So for, for any medical students, um, I mean, I, I'll first, first and foremost, I'll say that for a medical student, um, IR is the best field. I, 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 I am unabashedly will say that I love what I do. I would do it for free. I would, Go to the end of the earth to do IR because you know being able to do amazing procedures um, on patients who become you know very, you very, you become very close with being able to fix people on a daily basis with shorter procedures that don't you know require drains and open abdomens and wounds complications and you know, things like that and while preserving their anatomy is so you know it's beautiful it's I can't you know I, I'm I'm shocked that I'm allowed to do this on a daily basis so I love that um, so IR is amazing I, I love it every day is fun. Um, I get to do diagnostic radiology once in a while too. I don't practice much diagnostic, but you know, once in a while I'll do diagnostic and I still love that too. I, I mean, radiology is, is an amazing field itself. So I get to practice medicine in a way that is fun every day, which, which I think is, I mean, I, I, I can't say how lucky I am for that. So in terms of if people are deciding, um, at least explore it as a medical student, because very few people leave radiology or IR. Um, a lot of people try to join radiology and IR. So that could probably should tell you a lot about the field itself. In terms of joining, um, I tell people honestly that diagnostic radiology and especially IR, they're very competitive fields. Um, some of them, you know, wax and wane a little bit, but as of right now, they're very competitive. So what can you do? Obviously do the best you can to get in. You know, um, previously it was USMLE step scores. Now that's going to go pass fail. Um, it's all about, um, you know, uh, getting good letters of recommendation, doing well in your preclinical years. I mean, that, that's, that's obviously everybody should do as well as they can. Um, in terms of IR specifically, a lot of it now is going to be, you know, are you involved in SIR? Um, do you have a good mentor? Have you done some research, ideally in IR? And at last, you know, can you do some away rotations? So people can schedule some of these away rotations. It's great because um, for me personally, it's great to hear that this patient or this patient, this um, medical student has been to another place where um, I, you know, I, I, I know it's a small field. So I know often all these other program directors and other docs. And I hear, you know, this patient is, is patient this medical students really good. This, this is i'm in that mode now um that medical students really good it's really important for me to hear that and you know that goes a long way for me um but the other thing i tell people is you know uh, not everybody's the most competitive you know person in the world I, I tell people you know flat flat out that i wasn't the best medical student in the world but i i'm i think i'm a very good ir and so what it was it, you know for me would be if, if i i would have applied to integrated ir if i didn't get in i would have applied to diagnostic radiology preferably a program with ESIR. And if not, there's still a ton of programs out there that do two-year independent IR residency. So for, for at this point, you know, if you want to get into, you know, IR radiology, if you work hard enough and apply broadly enough, um, I'm hoping there's still a chance for you because, you know, I think the field is looking for, you know, curious, passionate, intuitive, you know, you know, um, people who are just really, you know, uh, passionate about the field. So um, in both radiology and especially IR, I, I think, you know, there's still, um, multiple ways and pathways to get in. And if, if you're curious enough and work hard enough, I, I think, uh, you know, for the most part, you'll be able to get in. Awesome. Um, well, again, thank you so much for, for your, your insight and feedback on the field. I think I've learned a lot, definitely. And I hope a lot of other people who watch this will also get a better idea of IR. Um, so thank you.